Since the introduction of DQN, there has been several enhancements to the algorithm. Double DQN was the first enhancement to show major improvements. In this video, I'll show the concept behind Double DQN and we'll implement it in our DQN code. I'll try to explain the concept using Flappy Bird as an example, but I'm going to change up the actions and rewards to help illustrate the scenario. Let's say the bird has two actions to choose from, either to fly up like this or to fly straight forward. If it goes up, it gets one reward. If it goes straight forward, it gets nothing. Now I know these rewards might not make sense, but don't think about it too much and just try to follow along with the example. Now hopping over to the Epsilon Greedy algorithm over here, I talk about this one in uh, video number four. So if you're not familiar, hop over to that one afterwards. Basically what we do is we start off Epsilon at one, and then we generate a random number between zero and one. If the random number is less than Epsilon, we choose a random action for the bird to perform. Otherwise, we choose the best action that we know of at the moment, and then we decrease Epsilon over time. Random action means the bird has a 50-50 chance of either going up or straight, so we can disregard this one. But over time, it's going to start choosing the best action. What does best action mean? Best action means it's going to pick the max Q value of the next state. What is the max Q value of the next state? Over here, it's Q value is probably gonna be uh, approaching one, whereas the Q value here is going to approach or stay at zero. Over time, the bird is going to favor going up. Let's say the bird does some more uh, exploration. It goes up again, gets a plus one, goes up again, and finally it hits the top of the screen. Here it gets a reward of, let's say negative three, so we discourage the bird from keep flying up. And if it keeps going straight, it still gets no points until it passes a pipe. This is where we get a plus one reward. This negative three is going to decrease the Q values and it's going to slowly trickle back all the way here. And let's say minus two is the Q value. Again, the numbers might not make any sense. Um, so over here, this one is going to trickle back and uh, let's say the Q value becomes one. Now the bird knows that going up is a waste of time and it's finally find the right path. So the max function here causes the bird to favor going up at the beginning, but it might take a long time before it figures out that up is not the correct way. So what double DQN is trying to address is all the wasted time or trying to minimize the time wasted exploring a path that might not pan out. So imagine the bird after it passes the first pipe it has these two choices again, and again, it wastes a bunch of time up here instead of going straight. Okay, I hope that paints a good picture of uh, what double DQN is all about. Now let's see how it changes the DQN algorithm. Remember in the second video, we talked about the policy network. When we talked about the uh, agent or the bird learning, we're really talking about training this um, neural network here. The input, is the state, which consists of where the last pipe is, where the next pipe is, and where the bird is. Given this input, the output are the Q values for the possible actions. So this is going back to the real flappy bird and not the example that I just gave. The two actions are, well, not doing, not taking an action or flapping its wings. So the output are the Q values. In order to train the policy network, we make a copy of this network into what is called the target network. The target network is what we're gonna use to estimate what the uh, Q value should be. Now, I'm not gonna go over the whole algorithm again, uh, just the essential pieces to help understand uh, double DQN. So in order to estimate the target uh, values, we use the target formula. So the target formula, we're calculating QT, Qt, given the state and action, 
Qt is equal to the reward if the next state is terminal. Otherwise, it's the reward plus discount factor multiplied by the best Q value of the next state. So let's say in the current state, the bird decided to flap its wings and the policy network calculated 0.5 as its Q value. We send the same input into the target network and we calculate using the formula up here what the target value is supposed to be for action uh, flapping its wings. Let's say it's 0.8. So we take this number and we plug it into here and then we do back propagation which basically adjusts the weights and biases essentially training the network. Now let's see what changes for double DQN. Let me reset these values. To adapt DQN into double DQN we actually only have to make a small change to the target formula, particularly this portion. We need to decompose this into two steps. Step number one is up here, and then step number two. Now let's walk through an example to see how this works. Let's say we're at state one, and we calculate the Q values for state one being 0.1 if we don't do anything, and 0.2 if we flap our wings. And using the Epsilon Greedy policy, we select the best action here, which is 0.2. So we flap our wings, which brings us to state two. So these are the values for state one. And this is our state two. And state two is our new state. State one is our current state. Let's say in the new state, we get 0.3 and 0.4 for Q values. So up here, Q of the new state is going to be 0.3 and 0.4. 0.3 is for node 0, node add index 0, and then this is node 1. Now the max operation will figure out that 0.4 is the max, and then the argument operation will grab the argument of the max Q value. So now the best action is equal to index one. And this is the number that we need for step two. Step two looks a whole lot like the target formula. In fact, these things are the same. So I'm gonna just cross it out to ignore it. So this is the only difference. Now in step one, we already determined that index one consists of the best action. Now we just need to get the Q value from the target policy. So sending in the same state one, we calculate that, let's say this is 0.5 and 0.6. At index one is 0.6. So 0 0.6 is the target Q value. And this is what we're gonna send back to the policy network and then we do back propagation, which trains the weights and biases. So essentially, instead of using the target network to get the best action and calculate the Q value, we're using the policy network to get the best action and then pass that into the Q network to calculate the Q value. The double DQN paper suggests that by doing this decomposition, it reduces the problem that we talked about in the example at the beginning of the video. Now, in terms of why this works, the answer is math. And I'm sorry, I am not able to explain this math, but I will link to this paper if you have a strong math background. Now, let's quickly go over what I changed in our DQN code to make it adapt to double DQN. In my hyperparameters file, I added a flag, which basically uh, allows me to switch back and forth between regular DQN and double DQN. And of course, in the init function, I'm loading that parameter from the XML. Now in my optimize function, we have our original DQN formula here. If enable DQN flag is on, then we'll do this formula up here which correlates to what I did on the whiteboard. So I suggest going back to uh, video number five and seven, where I created the target formula here, 
And once you're able to understand that, it should be pretty straightforward to understand what I'm doing up here. You can also put a breakpoint here, run the code, and see what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, so it is that easy to add in double DQN. I tested this against Cardpole and Flappy Bird. Both are working, so I'm not gonna make you watch it. Uh, it's not much different from DQN. So the question is, did it improve my training? In order to answer that, I need to run a whole bunch of tests and uh, compare the results between the DQN training and uh, double DQN training. But that's too time consuming, I didn't do it. Keep in mind that the double DQN paper also says that not all environments will see huge positive improvements. Before I go, in case you're wondering why this is called double DQN, is it because there are two neural networks? Well, not really because in regular DQN we also have the two networks. So before DQN was a thing and it was just Q-learning, the same author proposed double Q-learning which instead of using one Q-table, it uses two Q-tables. So essentially doubling the Q-tables. And then after the introduction of DQN, the author applied the same technique and kept the name double. And that's why it's called double DQN. All right, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment if you have any questions, or just leave me a comment if you want to support me. And I'll see you in the next video.